私を排除するですって<笑>やってみなさい Number 10 White Blood Cell Cells at Work Code Black Thanks to the previous season, we already knew that we had a whole fleet of adorable anime girls living inside us. It's just that the arrival of this neutrophil taught us that there's also full blown waifus who run around with giant swords too. If there was anything that was going to convince you to take up a healthier lifestyle, it's the knowledge that there's a busty, beautiful pale goddess who has to suffer in a terrible work environment if you don't. Number 9 Pandemonium Gintama. Someone should have really taught Shinpachi that it's what's underneath that counts, because if he looked down just a little, he would see that the beautiful face he had the hots for was attached to a short, slimy alien body. <laughs> These things are like something out of Berserk, and yet, just by swapping out its garish mug, for that stunning young woman, this comedy caused audiences to doubt themselves. <laughs> Number 8 Oceana Metabots. Don't worry, my precious. Norbert won't let anyone take you away. In a world where humans and robots work side by side in just about every industry, it stands to reason there's gonna be one or two that are on the, well, sexier side. Somebody pinch me, cause I must be dreaming. My body. For our buck, we're going with Metabee's one true love, the mermaid with the gentle heart and the even thicker behind. Even when she was just a voice, Oceana knew how to make people swoon, and then everybody got a look at her robe body. You can win this, Metabee. I believe in you. Whoa. And yet, she bailed before Metabee could show her his metaphorse. What a shame. Yo! Get your grubby paws off her! Number 7 Mosquito Girl, One Punch Man. You'd think a spindly body, hunger for death, and army of killer insects at her disposal would cause any fans to break out the bug spray. <sighs> but no, there's something about this dominating anthropomorphic anthropod that has us coming back for more. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy given how she not only massacres indiscriminately, but as soon as she's got enough blood in her system, she willingly destroys her own horde so she can keep the spoils to herself. So she's a monster and a gold digger. What a combo. Number 6, Krush Lulu, Overlord. The likes of Albedo and Shaltier dominating the screen with their uncontrolled lust for Bone Daddy Eins, you'd have thought there wouldn't be any room left for other fancy femme fatales. <laughs> And yet, out of everyone in this entire franchise filled with death and domination, the only one getting any action is this reptile woman. With her albino features and reserved disposition, this maiden of the Lizardman race somehow succeeded in enticing a few wandering eyes. Come on, lads, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Number 5 Kunai Zenao Monster Girl Doctor A warrior through and through that has dedicated her life to serving as the bodyguard to the last dragon and is not one to suffer fools. 
She is, however, one to moan out loud while getting her limbs reattached. Essentially a Frankenstein monster, Kunai's status as a flesh golem allows her to lose her limbs and still keep on fighting, though it does require her to get them stitched up, something that seems to invoke a great amount of pleasure from her. <laughs> She's made of dozens of corpses, and yet she's the only one for us. Guess it's easy to fall for a gal who's so well put together, uh, well, most of the time. Number 4, Insomni, Yokai Watch. Surely a series aimed at a younger audience with an abundance of Pokemon-esque ghost monsters couldn't contain anything even remotely out there. Oh, but how wrong you'd be. Say hello to Insomni, and much like her namesake, she will indeed keep you up all night. Even if she's got one eye and will make you party until you pass out, there's no denying she's channeling some major God of War vibes with that spook me daddy look. <laughs> Number 3, Cho Hakaimon, Digimon Cross Wars. Digivolutions make no sense, just saying. As the partner of one of the members of the rival hunter group, this Digimon started out as the mischievous yet ultimately cute bundle of fur that attacked with balloons. <laughs> Naturally, you'd think the next form would constitute something more bestial. Maybe a few more balloons? Ha! <laughs> what anime did you think you were watching? Obviously, its digivolved state should be a lean, barely clothed, hammer throwing young woman inside of giant pig armor. Don't ask us why, we just know some of you out there want to go hammer time with her. <laughs> Number 2, Centauria, Monster Musume. Why must you confuse us, anime? <laughs> On the one hand, we have this beautiful, noble knight in training, who also happens to be so stacked up top that she raised the bar for harem contenders everywhere. On the other hand, she's also part horse. <laughs> Not that we have anything against centaurs, it's just a tad distracting when the best girl of the entire monster troop also happens to have a full mare body beneath the waist. <laughs> Number 1, Everyone and Everything, Interspecies Reviewers. Whatever fetish you have lurking away in the darkest corner of your mind, chances are it was given animated life with this anime's thriving monster girl scene. We're not kidding when we say the ladies of this world truly have something for everyone, and then some. With the ridiculous amount of attractive creatures this show has to offer, it's absolutely no wonder the protagonists of this story have given themselves such a hefty goal. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.